we are just one week away from Election Day. That's where we're starting The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Hannah Jewell. It's Tuesday, October 29th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. Kamala Harris will hold a rally in Washington, D.C. today. She'll speak from the Ellipse, an area near the White House. That's the same place where Donald Trump spoke just before rioters attacked the Capitol on January 6, 2021. It's where he urged his supporters to march on the U.S. Capitol as Congress was meeting to certify the results of the 2020 presidential election. As the presidential campaign heads into its final week, the question of whether Trump is a bona fide authoritarian is taking a surprising place in the middle of the discussion. Harris's rally will continue the vice president's efforts to portray her Republican rival as a danger to democracy. Meanwhile, at a rally yesterday in Atlanta, Trump responded in some of the most direct terms yet to accusations from his former aides that he is a fascist. He criticized Democrats' references to Hitler and the Nazis. And then he said this. They use that word freely, both words. They use it, he's Hitler. And then they say, he's a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi. I'm the opposite of a Nazi. I don't know. Number two. Elon Musk has become the October surprise of the 2024 election. The Tesla chief executive is not the first billionaire to pump money into an election campaign. For decades, rich people have leveraged their megaphones to tilt the political scales, as Musk does on his social network X. But Musk has gone further in his support of Trump. A few examples from recent weeks. He has defied a Justice Department letter warning that he may be illegally paying to incentivize voter registration. He's joked about the futility of assassinating Kamala Harris. And he has shared a blizzard of misleading information about the integrity of the U.S. voting system. His social network X, formerly known as Twitter, has changed dramatically under Musk's ownership. Users now largely see posts that skew toward Musk's own political bent. This morning, The Post published an analysis that shows that Republicans are posting more, getting followed more, and going viral more. You can find this exclusive story in our newsletter. Just follow the link in our show notes. Number three. The owner of The Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, defended his decision to end the paper's presidential endorsements. On Friday, the billionaire founder of Amazon said the Post would no longer publish endorsements of candidates for the White House. The decision outraged readers and journalists at the news organization, particularly as it happened so close to Election Day. So Bezos is now on the defensive. Yesterday, he published an opinion piece on the Post's website to explain his move. He called it, quote, a principled decision. And he also cast doubt on the usefulness of newspaper endorsements. Bezos said his decision is aimed at restoring public trust in the news media. But he also said he wishes he'd made the decision earlier, in a moment, quote, further from the election. The fallout from the decision continued yesterday as three of the Post's 10-member editorial board stepped down. The board is part of the newspaper's opinion section. In the two presidential elections since Bezos bought the Post in 2013, the board did endorse Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Number four. North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia's Kursk region. Last week, we told you about U.S. intelligence reports that North Korean soldiers were in Russia. Officials said there were about 3,000 troops undergoing combat training, but it wasn't known if they would be joining the war in Ukraine. But yesterday, NATO announced the soldiers' presence in the Kursk region. That's the part of Western Russia bordering Ukraine, where Ukrainian forces seized territory in a surprise attack over the summer. NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta said yesterday that this development would represent a dangerous expansion of the war in Ukraine. The deepening military cooperation between Russia and North Korea is a threat to both the Indo-Pacific and Euro-Atlantic security. It undermines peace on the Korean peninsula and fuels the Russian war against Ukraine. 
U.S. officials now say that up to 10,000 North Korean troops are training in Russia. New research shows that planet warming pollution is growing at the fastest rate in history. That's our fifth story. The World Meteorological Organization released its annual greenhouse gas bulletin yesterday. It said that concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are now growing faster than at any time since our species evolved. Carbon dioxide is the most important driver of global warming. And levels of other potent greenhouse gases, methane and nitrous oxide, also hit all-time highs in 2023. Most of the growth comes from people burning coal, oil, and gas. And on a warming planet, ecosystems are becoming more likely to produce emissions and potentially less capable of absorbing excess carbon. Number six. The Dodgers could sweep the Yankees in the World Series tonight. A series of mistakes by New York handed Los Angeles a 4-2 victory at Yankee Stadium last night. That gave the Dodgers a 3-0 lead in the best-of-seven championship series. The Yankees have not been playing anywhere near their best. That includes the team's star, Aaron Judge. He's had just one hit in the World Series and has been racking up strikeouts. Like when Dodgers pitcher Walker Bueller got him here in the first inning. Aaron Judge swings and misses. Bueller with a cutter to strike him out. Game four is tonight in New York. You can watch at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox. And at number seven, a new statue of Dwayne Wade sparked ridicule. The retired NBA legend was honored with a statue unveiled outside the Miami Heat's arena on Sunday. That's where Wade played most of his career, helping bring multiple NBA championships to Miami. The artwork depicts Wade doing his this is my house gesture after sinking a buzzer-beating three-pointer to beat the Chicago Bulls in 2009. But fans online weren't convinced the statue looks very much like him. Some said the statue looked more like Kelsey Grammer, the star of Frasier. Others said it looked like Han Solo encased in carbonite. Here's what Wade himself said shortly after the statue was unveiled. Like, that's crazy. I can't believe that. Who is that guy? One local reporter said the problem was simply one of perspective, and that if you get the angle just right, he looks a lot better. Who among us can't relate to that? If you want to judge for yourself, you can see a photo of the statue in our newsletter today. Find a link to that in our show notes. All right, you're all caught up. Before you go, though, make sure you sign up for that newsletter I just mentioned. The 7 Morning Briefing has a lot to offer, not just pictures of Dwayne Wade's statue. You can also find links to all the important and interesting stories we talk about here on the podcast. And it's totally free. Just hit the link in our show notes and you can get the 7 Morning Briefing delivered to your inbox early every weekday morning. I'm Hannah Jewell. I'll meet you back here tomorrow.